Welcome back. This time we're looking at three equations and we have three variables, but I do have to admit, I kind of hedged my bets, I cheated a little bit. I didn't put all three variables in all three equations. If you did, it would just be a little more complicated. It would just take longer. It would be an uglier one to show and demonstrate. But you likely won't see too many of those in, say, most first year science courses anyway. You would see one like this, where it's more easily solved. Uh, math courses, you might see them, but you'd likely also learn some other tricks for solving them using something like a matrix. But I'll leave the surprises for you when you take math. So, what do we got? Three equations, as I did with two equations, I'm going to number them just to make it easy to refer to them. I got equation one, equation two, equation three, numbered based on how they are oriented. So equation one, we got 4y minus 3z equals 6. Equation two, 2x plus 7 equals 8z. And three, x minus 2z plus 3y equals 4. So I'm not going to write out all three equations at first. I'm going to write them one at a time as I need them. And what do we got to do? I mean, how are we even going to solve this? We've got one equation with all three variables. Well, ultimately I need an equation with one variable so I can solve for a number. Because that's what we want. We want to know what x, y, and z are. So I need to figure out a way to get each variable on their own. If you look, again, the first two equations only have two. And they both have z. So if I can solve y in terms of z, I can replace this y. If I can solve x in terms of z, I can replace this x, and then I have an equation just with z in it. That's what I want, because then, no matter how ugly it might be, I can solve for z in terms of a number, get the value of z, and then figure out x and y. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll start with equation 1. So we are going to solve this in terms of y. Again, 4y minus 3z equals 6. So we want to get y on its own. Well, I got to do, again, reverse bed math. So I'm going to try and get rid of 3z, add 3z to both sides. Okay. These will cancel. And 4y equals 6 plus 3z. And I need to get rid of this 4. The 4 is multiplying y. As always, I will divide by 4. So now I can say y equals 6 plus 3z all over 4. I now know what y is. I want to do the same thing with x and use equation 2 for that. So what do I got? Equation 2. And I've got good old 2x plus 7 equals 8z. Okay. Want to get x on its own? It's kind of similar to the one we just did, actually. In this case, I'm subtracting 7 from both sides. Not z. Ooh. Bad instinct there. So, 2x equals 8z minus 7. Or, again, we've got to get rid of 2. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 8z plus 7, minus 7. Yeah. Minus 7, all over 2. A few smudge prints, but hey, still hopefully right. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to be correct on this one. So we got x, we got z, we're going to place both of those in equation 3. So we're taking equation 3, which we had is x minus 2z plus 3y all equal 4. Again, we will get rid of x because, sure, we got x, but we also know x is equal to this mess right here. So replace x with 8z minus 7 all over 2. Minus 2z remains the same. We're not replacing it. Plus 3y. Well, y, we said, is this. So plus 3 times all of that. We're replacing y with this. Let's put a good big bracket there. Plus 3z all over 4. Great. Oh, and all that equals 4. Okay. Now we've looked at some problems where we have fractions on the bottom. We have these denominators, and we usually want to get rid of them so we can then solve z and get rid of brackets, things like that. But in this case, we have two different denominators. Well, a nice trick is if we know we can multiply something that get rid of both of them, we can get, well, we can get rid of them. I mean, in this case, there's one trick where you can fig multiply them together and then multiply everything by that. But in this case, I know if I multiply by 4, 
The 4 would disappear because 4 over 4 is 1, but the 2 will also disappear. 4 over 2 is just 2. So, long story short, what am I doing? I'm multiplying everything by 4. This entire left hand side, I am multiplying by 4. So every term in there will be multiplied by 4. And of course, I'm multiplying this term by 4 as well. Great. Let's see what happens. 4 over 2 is the same as 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we're going to actually get 2 times 8z minus 7 minus 2z times 4 or minus 8z. And then those 4's will cancel. So we're left with plus 3 times 6 plus 3z all equals 16. Great. Now we want to solve for z still. Like we were doing before, this is an equation, we want to solve for z. So we have to multiply everything out. Get rid of our brackets, multiply all the terms in. So we're going to get 16z minus 14 minus 8z plus 18 plus 9z. All equals 16. Great. So we now want to group all the terms together and this, well, eventually we'll solve for z, but so 16z minus 8z plus 9z, or in other words, 17z. And then we've got minus 14 plus 18, or in other words, plus 4, all equals 16. So we want to subtract 4 from both sides. And we get 17z equals 12. Divide both sides by 17 to solve for z. And we get z equals 12 over 17. Great. Well, that is one of the answers I knew. That's something I needed. Yay, we got z. Now we also need x and y. So we can go back to these equations and figure out what they are. We've got x in terms of z, so we can replace z with 12 over 17, no check mark, I should, that was just my enthusiasm. Now it all looks like part of the box. So z, 12 over 17, we're going to replace that in and solve for x. And hopefully I'm going to have the room to do so. Let's find out. Start with x up here and hope we have room. So we've got x equals 8z which, again, we're taking the final result, since we already know x in terms of z, makes life easy. So 8 times 12 over 17 minus 7 all over 2. So it looks a little messy, but we can still solve this. So what do we got? We got to do multiply that in. We're going to find these all the same base. It's going to be a little messy. So x is still equal. Still have x on the left. 18 times 12, we get 96 over 17. We ought to put 7 to the base 17 as well. So remember, we want to do 7 times 17, which should be 119 over 17. All of this over 2. So 119, 96 minus 119 should give us, well, Let's go 23 minus 23, minus 23 over, and the thing is we have over 17 over 2. So that's the same, we bring the 2 in and multiply the 17 by it. So we got over 34. X should equal minus 23 over 34. Finally, same with Z, or same with Y. We got Y equals. 6. And again, this all looks really messy. I know, you know it, but it's just doing the math, working our way through. Again, sometimes you're going to have perfect round numbers and math will look easier, it'll work better, but sometimes that's not going to happen. Sometimes you're going to have these fractions and you've got to work through it very methodically. you just got to be a little careful and get it done. So, we're replacing z in this equation. And very similar to what we did up there. Multiply it in. So y equals, well, we know we want to be over 17, so we have to multiply 6 times 17 
or 102 over 17 plus 36 over 17 all of this over 4 which again same thing 102 plus 36 so we're gonna get y equals 138 4 times 17 68 and we see this could be reduced nice easy trick for reducing we can always since we have even numbers I know this can be reduced so what do we do we can divide both sides top and bottom by 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 so we can say that is going to be equal to since we're dividing both top and bottom by 2 they cancel so we're really just dividing by 1 which we're allowed so what do we get? So 69 on the top and 34 on the bottom, which can't reduce. So ultimately we just solved y as well. A little messy, a little long, but it was just applying the math and getting weird fractions. So we have solved the problem.